Good morning, everyone. This is Jessica Alstrom, and I am going live from Atlanta, Georgia, to do our second Sunday broadcast this month. I am on a little adventure looking around at some different states for some fun things to bring to our new apothecary. And we have turned our exploration into a fun little adventure when we don't have our kids. So uh, we decided that I would just go ahead and broadcast here live from Atlanta, Georgia, which is amazing weather out there. And I am loving the energy here. It's been so fun. So this month's second Sunday, as you guys know from the headline, you know, how do you move from survival to thriving? And I think that that is probably a question that I get hired for a lot or asked about a lot in the in the reference of you know how do i get to where i am to where i want to be and as if you guys are just hearing me for the first time jessica alstrom and i am probably known especially the last few years as kind of a biohacking expert and that basically means you know looking at who we are in our hearts and our souls and then looking at what we have and what we look like and what we're doing and analyze the difference in, in the measurement between what we are able to create versus who we believe we are. So if you sat back and thought about who you really are, when you close your eyes, your best case scenario, your greatest self, your, your highest level of imagination, your hopes and your dreams. And then you look at the current reality or simulation that you're living right now and you do a measurement not score not taking a score you should have done this or why am i not doing this but just a clear measurement to define if this is who i am and this is the life that i'm living where's the discord where's the, the where's the the interruption right it, because you are energy and your life is energy and everything that's made up in life is energy and everything in the simulation, whether you like it or not, is based in matching frequency or matching vibration. So when we believe that we are a different vibration than we are living, then a lot of times it takes us down into more of a lower thinking spiral of why. And why am I here? Why am I still doing this? Why do I still not have this? I've been doing so much work. Well, if you've been watching my last videos or you're a part of my um, alchemy mastery class on my um, in my academy that I have called the quantum method, then you probably had the answer to that and you're probably helping other people through that right now. But if you're not and you're just hearing this for the first time, I love to bring the wise. I love to bring the house because that tends to be the universe's job. You know, our work in creating our reality is split in four valves, just like the heart. Your job as a creative individual who can see, think, feel, and know, your job is to desire, obviously, and know what you want and basically why you want it. Those are the ways that you can figure out where you are in coherence of your highest, most amazing self whether that's to change the way your body looks or to change the way your pattern in your life looks, the blueprint of your abilities to create in your environment, your money, your time, your relationships, it all is happening from inside of you, whether you believe that or not. You are nothing more than a projector that is showing in your projection a reflection of what's going on in here. We can't see what's going on in there, just like you couldn't see your face without a mirror. So what we do is we project the vibration that is most chronically uh, playing out within, outside of us, and then that gives us clues to see what's going on vib vibratory in there. And that allows us to make some course corrections and alignment. What we usually do, do, though, is we judge it, we scratch our heads, we hire other people to tell us why, we read more books, we get more certifications, maybe we, you know, take some drugs to help us get there. And none of these things are necessarily wrong because you'll notice that even the worst possible things you've ever done have gotten you to this moment, and at least in your eyes. 
you know, there's no bad or good when we're looking and playing a game of moving out of duality into non-duality where everything is part of the journey, whether it's the darkest parts of you or the lightest light, when those merge, right? That's when you step into creator. So your question, why and how is the question that I get every single day. And I love to play the middleman of the universe, the broker, right? All of us healers, practitioners, way showers, guides, you know, psychics, that's, that's what we are. We are a middleman. We are the broker. We have, you know, a relationship maybe with the universe that you don't believe that you have. And therefore you utilize our ability to hear, know, see, speak to the channel and then get your information. And hopefully by now you have discerned between, you know, information that makes you feel empowered and true and information that makes you scared and worried. And you've learned to separate that out and who you're listening to. Ultimately, you know, my goal for you is always to be able to cut out the middleman. That means, yes, I'm trying to put myself out of a job constantly. You do not need a middleman to close this gap. You do not need a broker. You do not need anything outside of you to close this gap. What you do need is you need to see what the heck is going on in there and, and really unpack what might be entangled, why it might be mangled, why it might be traumatized, what might be, you know, hidden or buried from you, from your view, so that you can basically bring it out enough, maybe not manifestational wise in your physical reality, but bring it out enough for you to discern. And to me, the difference between discernment and judgment is judgment is based on fear versus love. Is this going to hurt me? Could this hurt me? Is this um, good? Is this bad? And judgment always is a simulation of self-preservation, which means anytime there's a judgment, it's coming from a prior wound, a prior trauma, or a prior belief system that says, no, 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 that is wrong, or that's unacceptable. And therefore, that's blurred. That's not going to be true for you. Discernment is when you can look at something in a state of neutrality and say, okay, does this help me expand my awareness of self? Does this help me move into alignment of my hopes and dreams? Uh, and then it's basically a hell yes or no. And this is what really you guys, most of you are still scratching your heads trying to figure out how to do. It seems like the most easiest thing in the world to listen to your gut, but it's not. It's, it's not easy because your entire simulation, the, the simulation that you're living in third dimensional reality is based in the master and slave program. There is no other program. If you are vibrating at a third dimensional reality point, which means you are playing the third dimensional reality game, and I'll explain how you do that in a minute. If you are focused, attentive, you're paying attention, you're interacting, you're communicating, you're living in the third dimensional simulation, you are going to have a third dimensional simulation game, which means no matter who and what you are inside, if you are still playing that third dimensional reality, it doesn't matter how enlightened you feel in that space. It doesn't matter what you can channel. It doesn't matter who you can touch and heal. It doesn't matter what you can get access to. What it matters is that that game is master and slave, which means that even the highest level of your consciousness that can be a winner in that simulation will either have to be a master or a slave. There is no other game. So. When you're saying I'm here and I want to get here, well, we got to look at the bridge. The bridge is basically your journey. It's, it's everything that's happened to you, everything that could have happened to you, everything that's happened to other people. It's everything you've lost. It's everything you've gained. It's everything you know. It's everything you still don't know is literally a process of forward motion on this bridge to discover and remember who you are. 
that's that's your life experience. You know, you we, we kind of come in and we're full of hope and we're full full of our authentic self and we're quickly, quickly, quickly taught not to be that. We put masks and layers and walls around ourselves to protect ourselves from more hurt, from more humiliation, for from shame, you know, from resentment. And then by the time we're, I don't know, 20s, 30s, 40s, then we're, you know, angry at the world, angry at ourselves. And that is usually when we begin our journeys of basically disassembling the walls and the interruptions between our truth. So we're not going to get anywhere. We're unbecoming, basically, to return back to the factory settings within you where you knew the I am and the I am in your root chakra matched the I am in your crown chakra. And there was no separation. So that is really the bridge. You know, people experience it as a Kundalini rising or awakening. I don't necessarily recommend that happening too quickly without wisdom and knowledge and, and understanding and self-care and self-love on that process, because what will happen is if, if that opens up too much and your bridge lights up and you're able to move too quickly from your root chakra to your crown chakra into the I am's of as above is below, you may not have the skill set the self-esteem, the knowledge, the, the grounding, the, um, the ability to be present with that kind of force and power. And it can definitely overturn your life. I know a lot of people it's happened to, including myself. And basically over the last 10 years, I've been working to course correct, you know, just because you have access to something, just because you know something, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should be doing it necessarily if you are not the person that can handle your own reality in that. Like, you know, allowing a five-year-old to, to drive a car just because they can reach the pedals, right? Or just because they have been in a car or have a car, you know, that was handed down to them. So again, it's it's not about what's right and wrong. It's about where you are in knowing thyself, you know, this, this entire journey can be split up into business, religion, spirituality, science, it can go in any direction. And a lot of times it'll start with the resonance point of where you are most in belief of being true. And that will start your journey. And on that journey, you're going to discover a lot of truths and a lot of untruths. And in that, you're going to be coming home to yourself over and over again, because it is only heartbreak. It is only abandonment. It is only rejection. It is only, um, you know, uh, shame and guilt and humiliation that really get us to stop in our tracks and look and go, well, who am I in this story? Who am I with this person who says they can't love me or this person that's leaving me? This is how it works. It's unfortunate that in the third dimension, the way that you get the download fully of self-love is through heartbreak. But again, that's a master and slave program. So even if you are the highest level of practitioner that you know in your town, city, if you're the smartest person that you know, but you're still struggling with you know, money or time or relationships or health of your body, then really there is a master and slave programming in your life and you might be in jail, but you might be the one who has the access to the cigarettes and, you know, you might be the preacher inside that jail cell, but you are still in that jail cell. So what biohacking does, all right, we all want to go fast. We've all spent way too long in the definition of insanity. We've all gone spiral down and sabotaged our greatest efforts. We've all been up and we've all crashed down. We've all gone, you know, this way. And then we've tried to go that way. We've all given our hearts to people. And then we've had to take it back. We've all been abandoned and we've all been rejected. And I feel at this time in June of 2022, the rude awakening that we could kind of peek above the clouds out of that turbulence zone of that flight and look at that airstream that is above that turbulence and say, you know, 
what do I really want to do here? Do I want to keep fighting against the third dimensional reality and try to make it my, you know, playground? Do I want to wake everyone up here and, and show them the way? Do I want to overthrow the government with the injustice that I feel inside of me? Do I want to pioneer and build a new world inside this crumbling world? Or would I like a new game? Because ultimately, the journey has never been about mastering this game. This journey is about playing a game that you wake up in and say, no, thank you. This ain't my jam. I don't really want to be a master or a slave. I want us all to win. I truly believe in unity. I know where my skill sets are and my genius are. And I also know where my ignorance is and my helplessness. And that's okay. Because a lot of the times, the more genius you connect to within yourselves, the more you begin to hide your own ignorance because it feels like an oxymoron. It feels like you are um, not going to be as smart over here if anybody knew how you were over here. And I can completely vouch for that. The people who are in my, on my team know very, very well where I am absolute genius. And we also know where I am completely ignorant, still fumbling around in this story of dyslexia at times. Definitely consider myself a nutty professor where I can get into this quantum space and completely communicate it and unpack it thoroughly. And then in the third dimensional reality, don't know which way is east, west, left or right. When she says thousand you know, feet ahead, turn left, I don't know what that is. So you can see that there is going to be a discord in your greatness and in your ignorance. And that's usually what we hide and judge and bury because we want everyone to know where we are this, but we don't want anyone to know where we are that. And the journey is basically about this part of you teaching this part of you and moving together. And that is what biohacking is. It's about taking the best, best parts of you that are intuitive and natural and um, abundant and turning towards the self within you that is suffering and starving and hungry and lonely and broke and tired and not seen and not heard and not never felt loved and never felt like they fit in. It's the direction towards self that actually speeds up this bridge and moves us out of this idea of playing this game of suffering, which is when you're playing the game of suffering, every neural pathway in your brain that is the vibration of that particular game, and that's usually found in time, relationships, health, and money, okay? Because think about it, when you're channeling spirit, you're not in time. When you are channeling spirit, it's not costing you money, hopefully, if you're doing it direct. When you are in this relationship with the divine, right, it's clear, it's concise, there is no separation, there is no judgment, uh, there is no, there's nothing but love there, right? And then when you think of health of your body, it's, it's a fully animated version of your highest self, but in the third dimensional game, time, relationships, health, and money are also always a master and slave program. Either you are a slave to your body, right? You're a slave to time. You're a slave to money. Um, maybe you are the master of someone else's money. You might be the master of someone else's time. As a parent, the first seven years, we are playing the master of those little people's lives. We control their what they eat, what they do, where they go. And then usually someone above us is controlling that within us. So we are being told what we can go, what we can do, what we can eat, or what we can have based on what we see. And we are doing that to the smaller ones that we have either created or are, are basically guiding, right? Even our animal community that is domesticated, we are playing that master role. And see, this is where it can get very convoluted and it can be playing out that bully simulation where I'm being bullied, therefore I can bully. And that's a whole other mess. So when we're looking for this concept of the fastest way to get back to you, to turn on all the right switches so that in your heart's desire, you can live, breathe, act, manifest, go, have, do 
everything that you know truly how inside of your heart that you would like it to be here. We've got to close that gap of separation. So in order for us to get into a new game or a new simulation, it starts in the brain because your neural pathways have created time over, time over, proof, observation, witness, practice of every story in this third dimensional game. It's what your body knows how to do the most. It's what it's been doing the longest. It's it's taking into consideration not only that it's walked that road a billion times, but also it's also been in resistance of it. And you know, in quantum mechanics, what you resist entangles you too, because what you resist has a big charge and it pulls you towards it. So it's almost like, I don't like my life. I've been doing this my whole life. I've been acting like this my whole life. I've only had this my whole life. I've been sick my whole life. I've been broke my whole life. You know, telling whatever story the body is telling and then to solidify it and create a double whammy on it, you're also in discord or, or not wanting that life. And that says only yes to the universe. The universe is quite only yes forever. So if you say, no, 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 it says, okay, he's saying, yes, he's yes, with a lot of passion and intention. So the more we walk these roads that we don't want to play on and have a playground that is not fun to be at as a creator, the more entangled we can actually get towards it, okay? So when we're biohacking, we have to take into consideration Every, every opportunity to unpack what we have and what we don't have, what we have access to, what's actually going on versus, you know, what we believe is going on. And in order to truly biohack something, you cannot be in resistance of it, rejection of it, or judgment of it. So the three R's, right? There cannot be any judgment of what I just explained in order for you to get to your next level. Because as long as you're saying this sucks and this is this is corrupt and this is this is not okay and this food is poisoning us and these people are lying to us as long as you are paying your attention to that scenario that game then you are integrated in it because quantumly your greatest power is in your focus what you give your energy to expands regardless if it's negative energy or positive energy if you've ever had little kids and the loudest, most obnoxious one in the room that has the worst behavior is usually getting more of the attention. So it's a succubus and it will suck you into the story. Now, the story will activate these delicious hormones inside of your body that make it feel so damn real that you will argue even when you know you create your reality, even when you know you're in a simulation, and when you know this is we're making this up, you will argue with people around you to tell you to tell them that this is what's going on and this is what is because of the way you feel. Because ultimately, whatever chronic vibration you are is going to put you in alignment with the thoughts that you magnetize. The thoughts that you magnetize are going to create emotion, energy, and motion. And that energy and motion, weather is going to, like weather outside of you, is going to either be a storm, it's either going to be a sunny day, it's going to move into the brain that is a receiver and a perceiver, and it's going to decide what that emotion means based on your track record, based on what you have lived, what you haven't lived, what you have, what you haven't, what you've been, what you wish you were. It's going to cycle through all of those memory centers and move through the bloodstream so darn fast that you're going to blink. Every cell in your body is going to tell the story to the emotion. The emotion is going to be created into a feeling. This feeling then, of course, because ego is on the front line of your beta, it's going to say, well, now we have to assign a meaning to this. And the meaning is, is that they don't love us. They would never be tra treating this way if they did not care about us. And now that I've assigned a meaning, then my body will move into the character. My body will take shape of that actor and it will act out and behave the meaning that I have completely arbitrarily assigned to myself based on my track record. 
not where I want to go, not what I haven't seen yet, not what I don't know yet, but what I believe I know, I will take into consideration and I will build a meaning and a facade and therefore basically be back right into my simulation, no matter what certification I just received, I will be back in the game survival. I know doctors, I know, you know, scientists, I know, you know, amazing spiritual gurus. I know, you know, children, adults, older people who are, would blow your mind at the knowledge that they have, that the way that they can communicate the truth. And I also know that some of them are still in suffering. I know that there is a bridge and this bridge between thriving and suffering is called living. And I've been teaching this journey to my alchemy masterclass for a while now. And it's really about helping you at one step in front of the other, creating the quantum leap that you want really fast, right here, right now, right in this moment, right with what is happening. Because you can only in the intersection of a trigger or an inspiration, course correct. When everything is going good, you don't want to do your work. You don't want to meditate necessarily. You don't need to because you feel like you're in alignment. It's usually when things start to go south or when things start to go bad, that's when you start paying attention to your vibration. And that is what gets us out of our consistency and our routine of that forward motion. It's almost like this beautiful bridge that we had to walk across was kind of wonky and scary and uncertain. And some parts of it were in the fog and we couldn't see past our own nose. But this moment seemed comfortable, right? And okay, and there's food here and there's people here. I might stay here for a while. I might do this right here because I'm not uncomfortable. I don't need to go anywhere. So what we have to also pay attention to, if you're not in a serious biohacking program yet, where are you uncomfortable, uncomfortably comfortable? Because your comfort zone is going to keep you from asking, doing, and being more than you have been because you're comfortable, right? There's no 911 coming. There's no check engine light brewing. There's just you. And so we have to ask ourselves, are we truly comfortable or are we medicating with, you know, security blanket addictions that are making us feel like we are comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation. So there's all obviously some soul searching that has to go on and you've got to take a look at the reality that you've created and say, is this who I am? Because a lot of us think that, you know, we're star seeds and we come from, you know, we come from heaven and we're down here to like wake up everybody and take everybody with us and, and, and love everybody. And there's truth to that. But there's also truth to your particular earth journey and your karmic resolve here and what you're doing here and why you attracted the parents that you attracted in the simulation that you uh, created within yourself before you arrived. And that's important, too. And not that we're abandoning that to get over into this thrive space. We're not. We're moving into alignment of ourselves on a journey that provides the scenario of inclusion, of expansion, of togetherness, of unity versus separation and ego and, you know, uh, betrayal and suffering and loss and grief and all those delicious things that seem to happen even when you are thriving, apparently, over here. The rug will always be ripped out from under you. The shoe will always be pulled off the other foot. You will always drop below after a high in the in this thriving in, in this suffering game always 100 there is no alteration if you're playing that game you'll notice the higher you go the faster you drop down the more you stand in your own authentic nature the quicker you're attacked you know you start to pursue those hopes and dreams you get sick right you start that beautiful website your computer breaks right you begin to do for motion and you lose your flashlight So there is echoes that are set up in this suffering game for you to never get past the finish line. You get to the finish line, which is almost worse. You get to the finish line and you lose the weight. You feel amazing. You start your business. You fall in love. You do what it is you were working to do. And then the person isn't who you thought or the weight comes right back because you have a bad day or you can't get access to the food you were eating before. Or, you know, the body all of a sudden gets sick and you don't know why. 
So in that simulation, the more you go to the finish line, the faster the noose gets pulled down and says, not, not, not. You are a slave to this game. Now, you can accept that and live a pretty decent life in that as long as you know what game you're playing. Otherwise, it will feel like double suffering because you're suffering in that game and then you're suffering because you're having to play that game. Or you can say, I'm going to put down my suffering and I'm going to begin to live because it is only in the integration of living with all that I am, with all that I am not yet, that all I have been, that all that I could be, that I could walk this bridge and get to know thyself one foot after another in the present moment with what I have, nothing more, nothing less, and move into the space of getting to know what suffering and thriving are in the middle point. The zero point energy is living. I call it the mosquitoes at the lake feeling where you finally get that vacation, you take all your kids to the lake and it's covered in mosquitoes. What do you do? You pack up and go home. Do you hide in your cabin all weekend? Or do you find a way to live with the mosquitoes while you're having those experiences with your kids? Because it's really how we create new neural pathways is a choice. That choice is then practiced, 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 practiced. Because that road that you've traveled 100 times does not change because you read a book. That road you have traveled a billion times in your mind in a neural pathway through a belief system that you might not even be aware of does not change with a certification or a direct connect to spirit. It doesn't. The only way your neural pathways are going to change through the biohacking ideas is to recognize what road you're actually traveling on. Stop resisting it. Let go of the judgment of it. Go, I'm on this road. And I don't think that that is really who I am. So I'm going to be able to practice living with what I am, as I am, with everything around me, with no judgment, and begin to live in it to allow this frequency of not surrender, I give up, but this is the game I'm playing. And I become more in this game as I walk into my thriving game. Because thriving is win-win over there. It's unity. There's nobody talking behind your back. There's nobody with weird agendas. It's, you know, there's no justice required there because it's it's natural it it exists just like there was a playstation 4 and a playstation 5 these simulations exist and not only do they exist they're fully downloaded in your earth in your earth um game here in your ability to be in this body is a better game in the body that you have now your body may be attached to that game. I want to win it I want to beat it I want to command it I I want to make the money I want to do it let's see That's fantastic. Good luck with that because the game is smarter than you. It's based in your weaknesses and your flaws. So it will be one step ahead of you because it's a lower vibration of density. It's going to pull you down into the orbit of that suffering. And you won't even know maybe you're there. Maybe you are the preacher in that community. Maybe you are the the guru of your friends, but you're still in that game. So a lot of times when you walk this journey, you're, you, sometimes you're asked to walk alone. Sometimes you're asked if you are rejected and abandoned, can you still live? Can you still be? If you lose someone you love, can you still be alive? If you lose everything you thought you knew about life and the world, can you still live here? And these are the scary questions that you're going to be asked in this journey because you do not get from this game to this game. That quantum leap happens through the integration of walking towards the highest part of yourself, the lowest part of yourself, and it's the merge of the middle. It's the middle, it's the mediocre, it's the microdose. It's the every day I am alive and how can I turn this suffering game into living? Because I'm not hiding from it, trying to fix it, you know, telling people it's broken. I'm simply here saying, thank you for this experience. How can I live the most out of this moment, out of this day? Now, obviously, easier said than done, right? So what I have done is I, I have created a basically a biohacking circuit training program. So inside my quantum fitness centers, I have created a bridge. And this bridge is basically your unconscious, your subconscious, your conscious and your super conscious experience, your mind, your awareness, your your 
your, your, all of you. Alchemy means all of me. And because I have done extensive work in all different areas of these consciousnesses, I understand and realize that in order for us to get into the super conscious state of our future selves, of our super selves, of our empowered selves, of our unlimited selves, we actually have to go into the unconscious and basically bring the unconscious into the conscious. We have to awaken our own selves from that super conscious place. So from door number four to door number one, there's a journey. And in this journey, there is someone like me who is holding space to keeping you consistent and routine into uprooting certain things and certain places that you have buried and separated and disassociated from that are weighing you down that you do not know are there in the most loving way through basically body work, energy medicine, right? We're doing a lot of PTSD um, intense work through, through extreme temperatures. We're doing a lot of plasma work. That is what basically the neural the neural pathways are not just your, your energy or magnetic energy, it's plasma, it's blood. There's so many elements of you in your body that are either making the same road over and over again, or saying, okay, there's the road, but I'm going to create a slight detour right here. And then I'm going to create a slight detour right here. And yes, I'm still going down this road, but every day I'm going to create a slight detour until I have practiced, 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 practiced in my life, not taking me out of my life and putting me in a beautiful retreat for 30 days, but in my life, I'm going to create these new different ways of being, new highways, then then my brain will switch from suffer to live. And when my brain moves to live, even what could be considered suffering is life, just like childbirth. It almost kills the mother, but it produces life. In that second, the baby's born, when all of that pain goes away, everything was worth it. And in that moment, it is realized that only contraction and expansion was creating the pain. And therefore, it was all for the purpose. It's easier to see that on the other side, obviously. But when we're doing this, we're doing this in a very concentrated, very strategic way of opening doors and closing doors, turning switches on in the body and turning switches off. We are working in the vibration of the PTSD itself, post-traumatic stress trauma. We are working in the trauma feeling itself in the hormones. And we are taking our everyday stress hormones that cause anxiety, depression, brain fog, confusion, indecision, trust issues into usable adrenalized energy that is a perfect blend of your masculine and feminine truth that helps you live in this moment, but have all that power of your super conscious self with you right here in this uncomfortable moment. So it's almost like you have your mentor, you have your, you are your spirit guide in this moment. And this is the training that I'm putting people through. I am also pairing these quantum fitness centers with a old school, ancient apothecary of basically earth-based medicines. And this medicine is to give us an opportunity to microdose this extreme journey. Now, this journey can be very treacherous and full of weather and bug bites, or it can be moderate. And so this idea of us still feeling the pain of the situation at a mild level with the use of a microdosing element that the earth has provided every step of our journey, every idea from anxiety to depression, to worthlessness, to aching bones, to headaches, there is a plant on this earth, in this, even in the game of simulation, even in the game of master and slave exists, there is this, this beautiful sanctuary at our abundance that we may pull from and utilize to help this journey be a bit easier. Kind of like if you're going to go on a long trek, you kind of want to have some substance to take with you 
or someone to take with you. So these more ancient apothecaries are going to be paired with our quantum fitness biohacking centers, and they're going to be in extreme, like week long intensives or over a course of three months when we can really do the microdosing at a later. The purpose of it is new neural pathways, because think about it. Think about the last great thing that you manifested. Just be honest. Was it paired quickly or did it turn south quickly? Did it get taken away from you or minimized? Or when you were manifesting it, did you not all the way be able to integrate how you felt because there was pain underneath? Were you really able to be happy? Were you really able to separate yourself from the past pain and be here now with what you're creating? You know, there might be a lot of areas in your life where you are doing this, but there might be some sticky ones where it's in your blind spot still. And I've noticed that for humans, the stickiest places that have and hold the most trauma hidden at the plasma level of the bone marrow is relationships. This is where most of the bulk of the pain, because, you know, evil doesn't exist except if you look at what creates evil. Under every evil thought, under every evil doing, under every evil creation, underneath the root is heartbreak. Doesn't matter who they become from it. If you pull the thread of every monster that you've ever witnessed on this planet, whether it be a mother-in-law or your old boss or the government, if we pull the thread, we could find the original heartbreak that turned that heart cold and said, it isn't safe for me to love. And when I don't love, I'm not plugged in to source. When I am not love, I am not my own Wi-Fi. When I am not love, I don't have my own energy. Therefore, I consume it. I take it. I, I steal it. I devour it. And that is the natural part of existence in the third dimensional realm that is the game of choice, whether I choose to be love or I choose to steal love as an energy source. So think about what role you are playing in your own life with you, with your money, with your time, with your health, and with your people. Do you have the tribe around you that you can be completely authentic with? Are you still walking on eggshells? Are you still suffering in your abundance because we are one of the most abundant simulations there is and yet we suffer you know we have access to information we have access to all different types of medicine and choices when it comes to post healthcare sick care and again sometimes we're 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 in that overwhelm and suffering of too much choice all right so when we look at this concept of biohacking this isn't like come do my program this is more about looking at where you are and where you would like to be and seeing a measurement there of what you believe it's going to take because it's not going to come from a book. It's going to come from life. It's going to be the epiphany you have while you're doing dishes, not the lecture that you spent two grand listening to. It's going to be how you interact in your, in your tougher situations that's going to get you into this forward motion so much more than two hours of meditation. Life should and could be a meditation at this point, which means every moment is valid. Every moment there's a clue. Every moment there's a choice. Every moment there's a different way to look at it. Every moment there's a different part of someone that may be projecting on you that you could look around at the back end of their behavior and maybe see something else. Maybe you could see something else inside yourself. And if you're unable to do this by yourself, one step in front of the other, create substance for yourself, you know, a mediation microdosing program for yourself, create the four doors of consciousness that you can take yourself in and out of, turn switches on and off of, then maybe you could find your own quantum fitness, which we will be global because this isn't a U.S. This biohacking isn't just for the U.S., just because I happen to be, you know, signaling from here does not mean that this is where it's going to be. We've already created a facility in Canada. We have already have plans for UK and much, much more. Once we, you know, actually get our spaces opened, we have two, three years of clinical research now. It's 
100% successful if you show up, if you choose you, if you say yes to this thriving reality, and if you're willing to do what it takes not to get to know more, but to become more, to do more, to act out more of who you are, because this is how you become an artist. This is how you become a musician. This is how you become a builder and a creator and a manifester by practicing, 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 not the same old pattern expecting a different result because we read a book, but because we read that book that took us to a place underneath the pain that said, I am, and our desire is for the crown I am and the root I am to meet in the middle of the heart. And when they intersect, all of that ancient DNA will begin to turn on, light up. And this fully empowered, embodied, Christed being that you know you are in your heart will actually be able to utilize this physical vessel in the manner that it believes. So that's why I asked you, who are you? Not your story, not what your body is capable of in this moment or what you've manifested, but what you are inside. Your body's listening. Your body's tell us who we are. Are we the master and servant? Are we creator? Are we, are we a child? Are we playing? Are we feeling guilty for that? What should we do? Because the body is only technically designed to age 21 years till full maturity of the brain moving into the 25th year where it becomes more hardened and solidified. And at that point, creator, right? The observer behind the wheel was that I got it from here. I will decide how old we are. I will decide what we look like. I will decide where we go and what we are capable and how we are capable of going. And the body said, you take the wheel. But because we didn't take the wheel, the body said, well, I'm going to keep going in this age program. And as I look around and observe others, they're aging. Oh, and I look around and they're getting sick. I look around and they're broke. I look around and they're complaining. And so because there isn't anyone truly behind the wheel here driving the body, because the, the part of you that's big isn't comfortable in here because it's small and impacted and slow and maybe not how you want it to look. It's focused in someone else's direction or focused on how to get a different one or get out of it. It begins to run the program of the master and slave without necessarily your consent because you have not been in here being with this, growing this and expanding this to your custom design. It becomes the design by default of the program. Now you may be picking it up like at 47, like me going, okay, I'm taking this back now, but I'm not doing it because I hate myself or that I'm ugly or I'm old. I'm doing it because it's time. It's time for me to be here. It's time for me to remember. It's time for me to remind myself what I'm capable of, not what I think I can be because of my circumstances. Circumstances don't matter. That's one simulation. There are three simulations that you are able to play in third dimension. Master number three numbers, three, six, nine. Okay, we've got the game of suffering, the game of living, which is the bridge, and we've got the game of thriving. We all want to thrive. We take drugs, we, we do whatever it takes to feel that for five minutes. We are constantly addicted to the thrive drug, okay? Where we need to be, we need to turn down our dosage of our medication at halfway so that living can be bearable, still feeling the pain, so that we don't push ourselves too much to the extreme that we forgot we had pain, using pain as purpose, as fuel, as ammunition to grow our hearts back and grow that connection here. So the simulation you're in is really the focus of June. So June is going to have this full month in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is quite freaky, very knowledgeable, very much about knowing thyself and what this can do. All right. So as this moon gets full on the 14th here, I want you to pay attention to what game you're playing and try not to judge it. Maybe in some areas you really feel like you're thriving, but I want you to see is, is it thrive or is just my master and servant program feels more, do, more bearable? Are you really creating a reality or are you just creating a better reality than people around you? Because you might still be suffering and not know it because people around you seem to be suffering more. This is why I'm always saying eyes on your own paper. If you are interested in knowing more about the quantum fitness program or the apothecaries that we are going to be creating all over the planet in the years to come, 
reach out to me. Uh, you can find us on our Facebook page. It is um, Quantum Fitness. You'll see a cartoon character of me. Um, or you can go to my website, jessicaalstrom.com, and learn about my quantum university, which is the quantum method, which is, I don't know, 25,000 um, hours of curriculum of quantum theory and alchemy. Uh, or you can find a location near you, and you can also reach out to us through our Facebook page, through our email addresses found on our websites, or you know, um, join us on Instagram, Jessica Alstrom, or any of our other partners there. We've got Quantum Fitness Canada. If you want to start peeking in there, if that's closer to where you are, it's a good idea for you to sit back now and see how long your noose is, how long your your um, your leash is, and say, my desire for twenty two, since it's a rude awakening, since I'm un I'm awakening my unconsciousness. That's why I keep manifesting these triggers is if this is going to manifest, if my unconscious is ready to wake up, there might be a lot of pain that made it asleep. So if it's going to be uncomfortable, I'm going to be able to live with myself as I awaken that part of myself with this part of me that I have awakened that's badass and awesome, that I do know myself, that I do love myself, that I can do this. And together, we will actually go faster by coming together. All right. So that's the message for June, because June is all about getting into that empowered summer energy where it just makes you want to get outside and be yourself and flow and, you know, do do adrenaline based things, run, jump off cliffs, fly, you know, do all of those fun things. And as we move into this energy of July, you'll notice that we're going to be getting into this rooted old paradigm of control versus freedom. And it would be a good idea if you had a little bit of a running start to take consideration of your measurement between where you are and where you want to be. So thank you for uh, joining me for this message. And I hope to see you all on the